God bless you. We bring you greetings in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Coming from Chosen Generation Church of Jesus Christ, we thank the Lord for all you that tuned in. We bless God for all that have subscribed, amen, to uh, this ministry and listening to the tapes. And we encourage you to have not subscribed to subscribe in the most holy name of Jesus Christ. And this you will be supporting the ministry and being a blessing. Amen. And being a part of the work. Amen. Because when you subscribe, you're also uh, playing a role in working. Amen. The ministry. Hallelujah. And you that have subscribed. Amen. Praise God. Feel free to tell others and to encourage others to subscribe and that you'll be laboring with us in the ministry amen we need laborers we need people as jesus uh beckoned us to do he said pray that the father will send laborers into the vineyard amen for the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few amen so we want to encourage you to work with us amen to be a part of the ministry in uh, introducing, amen, this, the messages that you hear and, and introducing what God is doing, amen, in the ministry, praise God. Because this is all about the salvation of souls. And when you tell people, amen, about uh, this ministry in terms of getting them to subscribe, you're also uh, allowing God to edify and to build up those that's in Christ and also to encourage those that's not in Christ to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. For the ministry is centered around the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not centered around, amen, uh, a pastor or minister, but it's centered around the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to encourage you, amen, to uh, subscribe if you have not already. And, and to our subscribers, we want to encourage you to ask others to subscribe. Now, Amen. We love to take this time out as we do in the beginning of our message to pray for people. Amen. If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, bow your heads down and ask the Lord into your life. Ask him into your life because the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So just say, Lord Jesus, amen, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. Amen. I want to come out of the life of sin that I may walk in your righteousness and your holiness. Ask the Lord into your life. That's the first step. And then, amen, you need then to be baptized. Amen. Because when you give your life to the Lord and you turn from this world, we call that repentance. Amen. So when you establish the repent, repentance, then you're ready for water baptism. And then you're ready also to receive, amen, that anointing that God would give you. So he will anoint you. He will baptize you with his Holy Spirit. Amen. Upon your sincerity, upon your, amen, submission unto him, he will fill you with his spirit. Amen. So then the Bible tells us, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have actually received eternal life. Because God is eternal. If God gives you his eternal spirit, allow his eternal spirit to live inside of you, he has actually placed eternal life in you. Amen. He has given you life and that more abundantly by his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So to receive the spirit of God is to receive eternal life. So, Father, I do commit, amen, these precious souls that have called upon you for salvation. I do commit them into your hands. Amen. Let them, amen, be in the palm of your hands, in the center of your will, that they may serve you all the days of their life in the most holy name of Jesus Christ. Now, for those, amen, that's battling with sickness and disease, amen, uh, when we look at faith, faith is not, amen, about what God will do. But faith is all about what God has already done. Amen. So when we pray, a lot of times we pray for God to do. And more so than to pray for, uh, and bless God for what he has done. Amen. So when we look at healing, healing is something that's already done. 
Amen. But what we do by faith, we bring the confirmation, amen, of God's word into our lives just by faith. We accept it as being done because it is done. And then our bodies respond based on our faith. As a man that came to Jesus, there was a centurion. He said to Jesus, be it unto me. And, I, no, and actually he said, no, no, I'm sorry. Actually what he said was, I was thinking about Mary because Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word, which was still operating in faith. But watch this. The centurion said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed because, because he came to have his servant healed. Amen. Now, you come into God that others may be healed. But you need to understand that all God does is speaks his word. And since he have already spoken his word, as the Bible said, he sent his word and healed them, then all we got to do is stand on the word. The word is already spoken. The centurion told him to speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Well, praise God, we're in the day and time that the word has already been spoken. Because the work is already done. The work of healing is already done. Now what we do is exercise our faith. And we speak, amen, the word of God right into existence by our faith. We speak the word of God. The Bible said that God, amen, I'm going to show you something. When the word is spoken, do you know that God is watching over his word to perform it? He said, amen, that he would show himself mighty on the behalf of him whose heart is perfect towards him. See, when you, amen, take God at his word, your heart is perfect towards him. If I, be, if I begin to proclaim that my body is healed, amen, I am then, praise God, allowing my heart to align with the word, and my heart then being perfect towards him, God would then show himself mighty on my behalf because he watches over his word to perform it. He's waiting for someone to, amen, make the declaration and the, and the proclamation of his word in the earth. And then God will cause that word to prosper because God's word would never return unto him void. Amen. If you want to get somebody healed, you got to stop proclaiming that they're sick. And the sick got to start proclaiming that they're healed. That's the step towards deliverance. You know how we run and tell somebody, well, so-and-so healed. Or, this person got this. And that the doctors diagnosed them as that. Do you know that you're not actually operating in faith when you do that? In faith, you come back and talk about the, what the chief uh, physician is telling us in his word and declare that person as whole. I'm not going to call that person anything but healed. Amen? I'm not going to call them sick. I'm not going to call them after some name of some disease or virus, but I'm going to say this person is healed according to the word of God. And if we touch and agree on anything, praise God, God will cause it to prosper. When we touch and agree on what has already been done and spoken in God's word, then God causes our word to prosper. But if we speak against the word of God, then our words become the words of the transgressor. And the Bible said God will overthrow the words of the transgressor. So what we need to understand is you need to align your mouth with the word of God. Don't say what everybody else is saying. Everybody else is rep repeating the doctor's report. But you're going to re repeat the report of the Lord. What is the Lord's report? Who has believed his report? Those are the ones that are going to proclaim his report. If we believe the Lord's report, we'll tell the sick that they are healed. Praise God. We'll tell them according to the word of God, I proclaim you healed. Sickness and disease cannot live in your body because of the word of God. But we need it to go flow from both ends. Praise God. We need the person that's receiving it to say that because it's even more important for them to say it than those that say it on their behalf. Amen. Usually when I help people to get healed, I always try to get them to say it. They're waiting for me to say a special prayer over them. But I, I, I understand that their words was designed, praise God. They, in other words, their, their body was designed rather to respond to the words of their mouth. If they keep saying they're sick while I'm saying they're healed, we're not going nowhere with that. But I got to get those, amen, that's battling with sickness 
to say that I'm healed according to the word of God because I'm exercising my faith in that which is already written. And at the same time, uh, I'm revealing the true faith, which is, amen, and not what God will do, but what God has already done. I don't have to ask God to heal nobody. He already did it, really. But what I need to do is stand on that and proclaim that that person is healed. But guess what? I can't go nowhere with that without the one that's in the situation speaking the same word. If they speak contrary to what I'm saying, I can't help them because they're in the battle. I'm trying to fight with them, but I can't really fight for them. They got to fight too. And what they got to do is move away from the words of men and the words of men and move directly into the word of God and proclaim the word of God and watch what God do for you. But God is waiting. The Bible said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. God is waiting for the redeem to declare in the earth that the word of God is true. And God's word then will manifest in their bodies as they are speaking it. And they're speaking until their minds become renewed. Where their minds become one and their thoughts become one with the word of God. All their thinking is healing. All they, amen, praise God, allow to come out their mouth is healing. And as they proclaim the word of healing, their bodies will have to respond to the words of their mouths. But the first thing we got to do is get the one that's in the situation to get their mind in the right place. Get them out of the, the moaning and the groaning and the bitterness and the thing that the devil has brought in this situation to them. Amen. And bring them right into faith. Faith will bring joy to you. When you realize that the word of God is true, you have nothing to worry about. Nothing. Praise God. So that's the first step. Now, I, pra I want to tell you, I practice what I preach. I have felt sick in my body. Amen. And spoke and, and sickness left because God was waiting for me to redeem to say so. And once I said it, the word of God was realized in my body. I had been poisoned. Amen. And 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 I I was at the point of death. Got on my knees and my spirit started departing from my body. I felt my spirit leaving my body like vapor and my body becoming like a like like a lifeless. But God was waiting for me, the redeemed, because I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus, to proclaim. And what I did was be, I began to proclaim, Amen. Praise God. That no Nothing that I eat or drink, amen, can harm me. Because God said, if you eat or drink anything that's poison, it shall not harm you. But that poison was about to take me out until I made that proclamation. And when I made it, my spirit, I felt my spirit entering back into my body. I, I was like I was in between. My, I could feel the spirit leave, and I was hanging on to the edge. But when I spoke that word, I felt myself revive, the spirit fully entering into my body. And that's not the first time I felt that. Another situation I was in, because I was poisoned. It was a, a woman that was on the job that everybody hated, and somebody made her, a, uh, I think it was a, a fruitcake. They made it for her. It was just for her. It was just to kill her. <laughs> so, and she don't like fruitcake, so she took the cake anyway, and she gave it to me. At the time, I liked fruitcake, but I don't like it today. <laughs> but, amen, but I took the fruitcake and I ate it all up. And right after I ate it, I went under. I could barely stand up. But I was crazy enough to drive myself home. I don't know what, what I was thinking about. When I got home, I couldn't wait to run into the prayer tower, into my place where I was staying. And I could barely get in the house. And I fell on my knees. And I couldn't get up off my knees when I got on it. That's how much it was ticking me over. And I felt myself going in and out of consciousness. That's why I know this was serious. This was serious. It was a 911 situation. But I believe the paramedics, if I got, if they got a hold of me, I would have died. If I had relied on the paramedics, I wouldn't be preaching to you today. But I relied on Jesus. I would have left you. But I stood on the word of God. That's why I'm a true believer that what, if God has already spoken it, we just need to proclaim it. And our deliverance is, is sure to be. I believe it with all my soul because I've experienced it. 
Amen. I experienced it. And it makes it easy for me to minister healing to people because I've been in situations. I'm not just telling somebody to believe God like I've never been there. I've been in situations. At least three times, death came for me. But when I opened my mouth and spoke, death was rebuked. And the power of God was manifest. You know, sickness and disease is no more than death working in your body. And it's not just working. It's working to take you out of this life. But we can stop the process by the word of God. We need people to surround those that are sick with words of faith. And anybody that's talking doubt, do like Jesus did. Put them out of the room. When he was ready to raise a little girl from the dead, the dollars was in there saying she's dead, nothing you can do about it. Jesus told him to get out of the room. And they kept those that had faith around them. Now, you may hurt some people because everybody don't got faith. The ones that's closest to you might have to put them out of the room. Because if they ain't talking faith, they got to go. But when people are in situations, they need nothing but words of faith. That's all they need, which is the word of God. And the word of God is already proclaimed, it's done. So, you that are sick in your body, I want you to proclaim that you're healed. Because it's the truth of the word of God. I want you to tr speak contrary to your emotions. Tr contrary to the reasoning and the logic of men. I want you to speak contrary to medical science. But speak, amen, the word of God which contradict all. But the thing of it is, the word of God is designed just to do that because it tells us, let every man be a liar, but let the word of God be true. So though the doctor said that you're, you're finished and you got all these things the doctor want to do to you, and, and, and the more he do to you, the worse you get, you just need to believe the word of God and you're healed automatically your body responds to the word of God. And I speak over those that are sick and those that are, amen, listening to this uh, broadcast. I speak to you right now, and I proclaim life. You shall not die but live and proclaim the work of the Lord. And we have enough faith for if anybody pass, God can raise them up from the dead. We have that kind of faith. Jesus couldn't get to the little girl in time, so she died. But he raised her from the dead. So it's not over until God says it's over. But your faith will always lead you to a place where you never give up, even at the point of death. If there's someone that you minister to and they died, don't say, oh, I, I prayed for them to get healed. I did everything I could do, and now it's over. No, no, no. you got one more chance at this. You need to raise them from the dead. What do you have to lose if you speak to a dead body and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up. They're already dead. There's nothing to lose there. But go ahead and proclaim it and watch God raise them up. Because that's where we're at. We're at an hour in time where we got to believe God to the end and for the miraculous. That's what I want to say to you. So I will speak even now to those as in situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has delivered you already according to his word. We proclaim your deliverance, your healing, and the manifestation of God's power in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sick bodies, you're healed. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. And you that's in the situation, you have to, I want you to speak the same word I'm speaking. Even repeat what you heard I said. Say it as, I, as though it's coming from you. Because we got to come together if we touch and agree on anything. It shall be given. But I need the one that's in the situation to speak it. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak to your body and say, body, you're healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I deny sickness and disease. Speak it to your body. To live in my body. I deny it's right to live in my body. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're healed even as I speak, because the word of God is true in the most holy name of Jesus Christ. And if you're in a situation where your loved one has passed and you've been praying your little heart out, it's not over yet. You can still raise them from the dead by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Speak to that dead body and say, body, 
in the name of Jesus Christ, get up. Speak to them as though they're sleeping. What do you do if somebody's sleeping? You tell them to get up when it's time to go. Well, you're going to do the same thing. Jesus said, when Lazarus died, he only sleepeth, and I will awake him. And he said, Lazarus, like, like you would say to someone that you want to get up in the morning to go to work on time, get up. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise. So we use the old English word rise, but base is the same to say, get up, man. Get up in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm awakening you now by the power of God. Wake up in the name of Jesus Christ and live. For the word of God has been spoken on your behalf. And I proclaim it that the power of God may be manifest in the earth. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. I want to say to the believers, stop repeating the doctor's report about people and repeat God's report. Because if you was in the same situation, you would need somebody to do that for you so that you can recover. But if we all say what the doctors say. We're almost siding with the devil in their demise. So let's speak what the word has spoken. Let's not even let our eyes, our five senses guide us. But let's be guided by the word of God. For we walk not by what? Sight. But we walk by faith. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. In other words, we don't rely on anything in the five sense realm. But we rely on the realm of faith. Which brings the power of God in the situation. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. Now you that need the spirit of God. It's already granted. Because it's a promise. But you're aligned with God by this total surrender. If there's any place in your life that you feel you have not surrendered, you need to surrender now that the Spirit of God may fall upon you. Sometimes we have a time frame that God allows to be in before we feel because we need to check ourselves. We need to go through the process of elimination and look at our lives and say, is there any place where I'm coming short? That's what I did when I was waiting. And anything God brings to your attention, put it to death. Remove it. Let nothing take the place of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God is developing this, this in, uh, intimacy between you and himself. Praise God. He's going to feel you. And he can feel you right now. But if there's anything taking his place, it's going to be a hold up. Because God doesn't want to be second place or third place. But he want to be first place in your life. He want to be your first love. And first love is the term the Bible used to refer to God being all in all in our lives. So we bless God for the spirit of God now that's coming upon you. Lift your hands to God that belongs to you. Because you have given yourself fully to the Lord. Lift your hands to God. You have given yourself fully to the Lord. Don't believe what the devil has said. Believe what God has said. The devil may have talked to you about many things. Making you feel you're not worthy. But you're worthy. By the blood of Jesus. You've been made worthy. God has qualified you where you was disqualified before. By the blood of Jesus. You are ready to enter into the kingdom of God by the spirit of God. Let the spirit of God fall on you now. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. As I speak, someone's being filled right now. Let the spirit of God be manifest right now. Amen. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of God belongs to you. And it falls upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is your gateway into the kingdom. It is your transport from this earth to glory. The spirit of God is given to you now. In the most holy name of Jesus. It's yours. It's all over you. God's all over you right now as I speak. The spirit of God is all over you. Doubt has left you. And faith has filled your heart. Hallelujah. He has purified your heart with faith. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. All doubts are removed. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. And the power is upon you now as I speak. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Feel free, praise God, to express what God is doing now. Amen. Let your tongue go. Let it, amen. Don't hold back. Let God take over, praise God. Hallelujah. He's granting you utterance right now. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're speaking now as the spirit of God give you utterance. Amen. You're speaking that kingdom language. Don't hold back. It's yours. The power is on you. Amen. God has forgiven you of all. There's nothing you're not forgiven of. 
Amen. God has secured you. Praise God. Amen. There's nothing now to hinder you and to keep you, amen, from this power of God. Amen. It is yours in the most holy name of Jesus Christ. The lies of the devil that has been spoken, amen, has been proven what it is as lies. For the truth of God's word reveals that you belong to him. You belong to him from the foundation. Praise God. Amen. Before you came forth from the womb, you belong to him. That's why the spirit is yours. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ, it is yours. The spirit of God is upon you now. We thank the Lord for his power and his might. Amen. We thank him for moving mightily. Hallelujah. Because we want the people, amen, of God to experience. And those that's listening, we want you to experience, amen, that power and presence of God. We want you to have more than just a confession, but we want you to have experiences with God that you can then rejoice and praise him and give him the glory that's due to his name. We thank the Lord, amen, for this time of prayer. I, I just count it a privilege and an honor to be able to pray for you, amen, you that's listening, amen, hallelujah. And just remember, tell others that they may be blessed as well, amen. We want to bless as many as we can, hallelujah. And we need your help to do that. So you that have subscribed, I want you to go out, amen, and plant a seed in the lives of others. By